Ah, oh, the age-old question. Should you transcode 4K media on your Plex media server? I've made my feelings pretty clear about 4K transcoding in the past, but I never actually lined out the exact reasons as to why I don't like it. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about wasting resources on your Plex Media server by transcoding 4K. Also, giving your users, or maybe even yourself, a bad viewing experience. So what does that mean, Jason? Why is it a bad experience? And why am I wasting, <laughs> I don't know, I don't, uh. 4K transcoding, you will have a 4K video file, 4K, four times the resolution of 1080p. That means that your server has to work at least four times the amount to transcode the same video file that it would normally, let's say a 1080 or 720, all the way down to a lower megabit file, like two megabits per second at 720, as an example. You got a 1080p file, you got a 4K file. This one is, let's say, 10 gigs. This one is 60 gigs. They're the exact same footage this one's just better quality. The idea that you'd wanna make your server work at least four times as hard to transcode media than it would on a 1080p, to me, is baffling. You could have one of the most capable servers out there with the biggest, baddest GPU you could find, and you're still gonna find yourself running into limitations trying to transcode massive quantities of 4K video files. For example, my main server, Loki, the server that I actually was originally a Ryzen, now it's an X50 or X99 system with a 5960X in it, has an RTX 4000 card in it. Now that RTX card still has a limitation of, I wanna say eight gigs of RAM. It might be six, I'm pretty sure it's eight. I found this on the web, for how much RAM does the RTX- Yes, Google just said eight. Transcoding a 4K stream can sometimes take up to two gigabytes of VRAM just to process it. So depending on how well Plex handles multiple transcodes, I could easily run into a transcoding wall just on memory alone. Now I have a server that could probably do 30 or 40 freaking transcodes, but yet if I try to transcode a 4K video file, it's going to drastically drain the resources of my server, which does not make sense. That's just a dumb thing for me to do. And this is why even though I do share my Plex server with certain friends and family members, they don't have access to my 4K library. Even though it, I don't have a very large 4K library, it's still separate because I don't want them to transcode it. What I do is I just keep two files, a 4K and a 1080p file. Because wasting resources going from a 4K resolution video file all the way down to something like a 720p, two megabit per second file that you might stream on your phone, just doesn't make sense. But wait, there's more. Plex actually doesn't even handle 4K video transcoding very well as of making this video. So there's like an added reason not to do this. Now I know a certain somebody who for the longest time shared 4K media with their friends and family. In fact, I don't even know if they still do it. Uh, Jader, yeah, I'm calling you out, bro. But Plex does not handle HDR to SDR tone mapping at all. So what that means is that when you have an HDR 4K video file and Plex transcodes it because the likelihood of somebody remotely being able to direct play your 4K video file is pretty low. Whenever Plex transcodes this file, it takes that beautiful HDR color and it washes it out to where it just looks all gray. Now, some TVs and some clients might have the ability to decode this HDR information and make it look better, but as a whole, for the most part, you're just gonna get a grayed out video. Now, based off what I know, I think, now the, again, I don't know, but I think Plex just doesn't care about HDR to SDR tone mapping because it's not really that big of a deal when it's kind of a dumb thing to do. Again, that's what I think, that's not their actual feelings. I'm just putting that out there. So since they may not actually care that much about HDR to SDR tone mapping, they just haven't thrown a lot of resources at developing what they need to in their transcoder in order to do it efficiently. I know that there was like some like beta things going on and they're like they've been dabbling or getting close to it, but it hasn't been a high focus. And really, I don't blame them. Based off how much resources it takes to transcode a 4K video file down to something, it just doesn't make sense to do it. So I don't blame them for not focusing on it too much. However, my counter argument would be that it would be nice to have the ability to optimize, use a built-in Plex feature to basically pre-transcode your media files down to a lower resolution before somebody tries to stream it. Meaning that it would be nice if I could take a 4K video file, drop it in the library, and then 
you know, optimize that video file to be a 1080p or a 720p version. That way, anybody that I shared it with, if they try to play it, it would automatically either A, default to direct playing that optimized video, or B, it would transcode off of that optimized video, thus giving my server a lot less of a workload. So even though Plex might not be focused on HDR to SDR, I feel like having that with the optimizer working great might be a good add-on. Wink, wink, Plex. But color mapping aside, direct playing a 4K media file has a lot of variables and it's heavily dependent on your client and the video file you're trying to play. On some clients, if you wanna do something like play subtitles, for example, the client itself may not be able to use those subtitle files directly, thus requiring the Plex Media server to transcode and burn those subtitles into the video. So for example, my Xbox One, I think is probably the worst possible media player as far as file compatibility. If I wanna play subtitles on it, which I haven't done in a long time because I just don't use subtitles, it has to buffer and it has to transcode and it has to get burned into the video files from the server. However, if I were to have something like an Nvidia Shield, which I, I really need to get one of those. I've had them, then I returned them, but I really, they came out with a new one. Anyways, an NVIDIA Shield is one of the most capable and compatible media clients out there. It, just can handle so much. If you have something like that that doesn't require any special codecs or decoding or anything that won't force your Plex media server to transcode something like the audio or the video and everything plays smoothly, then you can avoid Plex transcoding. However, one little variable goes wrong and your Plex is just ramped up, your colors are washed out. I mean, it's just not a good day. So the moral of the story is transcoding 4K is a complete waste of horsepower. Yes, you could say it's a good flex. I'm all for the flex, trust me. It's like, well, I got the server to do it. Why not do it? I get that, totally get it. But once you're done proving that you can do it, it's really just kind of a waste of money to continue to do it. It's a waste of your server's resources and ultimately is kind of pointless. So that is why I never transcode 4K, I don't share a 4K library, and in the end, I really don't even have that much 4K content. Of course, that's also because my TV is old and it's not even 4K, so. But even if I did have a massive 4K library, I would still maintain a 1080p version of that library just to make sure that I'm not wasting resources by transcoding 4K. Well guys, leave any questions or comments you have about 4K transcoding in the comments section down below. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe below and have yourself a good day.